Hi friends, it's Mindy. Thanks for arting around with me today. Hey, today I'm going to sh um, show you a, how I make a sample board for a um, project. I had a client that had some built-in cabinetry that was oak, okay? Like the granny oak color, <laughs> okay? That orangey oak that a lot of people used to have um, and still have and are now possibly trying to get rid of that color. Um, so um, I met with her and we decided we wanted to do kind of the main part of the cabinets in black, but the the back sides of the cabinet, um, we wanted to make it look like grass cloth. So, um, which also takes care of the problem of how grainy oak is. Okay, so um, I used an oil-based base primer, a bin um, primer, which if you put two coats on, fills much of the grain on oak. Um, but anyway, there's there's the grain to be concerned about. A lot of people don't like that to kind of come through uh, if you just do a straight paint on it. Anyway, so we did, we're doing the side, side walls of the uh, cabinetry in, in black, tricorn black, and a faux grass cloth finish on the back, which I've done with plaster and paint and glazes, which is pretty fun and cool. Um, so I, I'm gonna show you step by step, step how, how I make the sample boards to show her. Um, just, um, I'll, I'll just tell you, in the end, she ended up going with the three color um, finish, but a lighter version of it, okay? So you'll see that as the last clip. Okay, so this is a fun project and one that you could do. So hope you enjoy this. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a sample board for a client and friend. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime the board, just using all-purpose primer. stuff done. Okay, our primer is dry. And now for our next step, I'm going to be applying a heavy bodied plaster. Okay, this is Venetian plaster. Um, I have a lot of it at my house. And you know, you can use this acrylic heavy bodied plaster to do to just do texture sometimes. And so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use one of my trowels to just do a skim coat a thin, even coat on my, this is a sample board. I'm actually doing the job in a couple days. Um, and I told my client I would do a sample board um, with two final finishes that she could choose from. Both of them though have the same initial process. So um, that's what I'm doing. This will be on a bookshelf, two bookshelves. Um, we're going to repaint the bookshelves, and on the back wall of the bookshelves, we're going to do this kind of grass cloth finish. So um, that's what this is going to be. Now, the color of this plaster is going to totally go away. This is I'm using this strictly for texture purposes. Okay, so now I have a thin coat of plaster. Oh, the sun's. Let me move this camera. Is that better? Sorry about it. Um, okay, so there's a thin coat now of plaster on here. Now I'm going to take my special tool. There's a couple names for it. I always call it a Waverly tool, but I think that might be a <laughs> brand name. Um, this is this one's made by Marmarino. They both, I believe, come from Italy. But anyway, watch this magic.
I, you know, I find myself going over and over and over to get these lines straight. But in reality, when you're doing this on a real job site, you're, you know, you can't go over one section of the wall one million times, and it's not going to be just quite perfect. So if there's imperfections in this sample, that's okay, because that's kind of realistic. Okay, so now we're going to let this dry. Then I'm actually going to paint it, and I'm going to glaze part of it. So that's next up. Hey, we're back. And you're probably thinking, hey girl, how did your sample get to be so big? <laughs> um, actually, I had this one prepared a couple days ago. So this is twice as big, more than twice as big as the other one. Same exact product though, same exact um, uh, plaster and the same application. This is basically, it, it's the same thing, okay? Um, I, after I made this sample, to this point, I thought, oh, darn, I should have videotaped the process. Anyway, so that's what I did. So um, this is just a bigger sample that I will, I'll tape off to be two pieces. One of them will be just like this with this color on it, which is Sherwin-Williams Antique White, which is, um, you know, I've been using this color for so many years. I used it, you know, 25, 20, more than 25 years ago when I first started in the business and now it's back again because warm, warm tones are back again. Um, okay, so one of the options is going to be just to have this, um, this uh, kind of grass cloth pattern just with antique white and then I will tape off half of it and I'll do a glazing on the other side. So that's what's up. So this needs to dry and then I'll do um, some glazing. Hi guys, welcome back. It's the next day. Okay, my my sample boards are dry. So as you know, I did one large one and one sm smaller one. They're identical. Um, I created like a grass cloth uh, texture on them. And both of them I painted with Sherwin-Williams um, uh, antique white, okay? So this one I'm gonna set aside. This one here, okay, is going to be my client's first option. So I'm just gonna set that one aside. That's actually what she was looking for. So that may be the one she chooses. I though wanted to um, give her a couple of options. So I'm gonna create a glaze right now that will go over this whole board. Then when that's dry, I'm gonna cut the board and not cut, but I'm gonna tape the board in half and do some additional um, techniques on this side, okay? So she'll actually have three options. So what I'm using for glaze today is Texture Lines Basic Glaze, okay? Um, this comes from the Plaster Center in Minneapolis. It's pretty thick, okay? So let's put some glaze in there. And then for the color, I'm gonna use Van Dyke Brown. This is Faux FX Faux Cream Color, Van Dyke Brown. Sometimes you have to kind of play around with the uh, ratios, but you use a lot less um, colorant than you do glaze. So let's try that. The colorants are pretty strong, so um, you really need usually a lot less colorant than you would think. Um, also, it helps if you have some sheen on your board. I used a flat enamel. So even though it sounds like it would be flat and porous, because it's enamel, it does have a bit of sheen and it's very durable, scrubbable. Okay, so it does have enough sheen ah, to be resisting this glaze. thing I have this paper towel here for my hands. All right, I'm gonna start putting this on and then I'm gonna wipe it back with just a plain dry white painter's rag. You could use a, um, you could use um, <clears throat> a, um, you could use cheesecloth as well. 
Um, all right, we're going to start applying this glaze. Now, well, glaze has quite a bit of dry time depending on the glaze. Each glaze is a little bit different. This one dries in just kind of like just the right amount of time. It's the um, it's a really nice glaze. Um, I've told you in uh, other videos that some of them have a really long open time is what it's called. And for some projects, that is awesome. Like if you're working on a big wall and you don't want seams to develop over like overlaps, um, you can get the whole wall done and just keep manipulating it. If you have a glaze that has a lot of open time, um, this one is just a really good kind of, I don't know, all purpose glaze that the open time isn't too long and it certainly isn't too short. So, um, okay, so you saw what I did. Now I'm just gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe it back. See what's happening? So we're trying to get the grass cloth look. If your rag was damp, this effect would be a little bit different. It would obviously pull off more of the glaze. Again, that's why whenever you, if you were gonna be doing this in your home, it's always good to do a sample board so there's no surprises. You know how your tools are gonna to work, even though this is just a painter's rag. It's a pretty important tool in this case. Well, a rag is always an important tool to me. <laughs> Just stand back and look at it. I think that looks pretty cool. What do you think? I don't know. I might just leave it like that. What I could do, if I really like these dark Van Dyke streaks, I could let this dry and do another coat of it. Um, because if I do another coat now, it might start kind of pulling itself off. In it's hard to describe. But you get to a point where you can't work it too much, especially I just dried it with my rag. So if I was going to do another coat, I would let this dry and then do another coat. What I'm going to do is I really like this as one option. I'm going to leave this side the way it is. I'm going to tape off this side. And then I'm going to do the same technique, but I'm going to make a couple different glazes. So it will look like kind of like natural grass cloth that has a little bit of green and yellowy, tanny, off-whitey, and then I may tip it with a white color on the top. So that will be the next thing you see. Okay, so everything's dry. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of like mask off just this one second section that I am covering up that I wanna present as its own sample um, with a paper towel and then I'm gonna use some um, yellow frog tape, which is delicate uh, for delicate surfaces, so it won't, you know, grab too hard and then suddenly my paint, you know, from the sample will get torn up. So, um, yeah, it's a good thing to know about yellow frog tape. If you ever wondered about the difference between blue and yellow, yellow is for delicate surfaces. Okay, so now I'm using two other colors, uh, two other tint colors. Um, one of them is called Terra Brown by, by Blue Pearl, and it has kind of a greenish hint to it. It's a brown, but it's kind of got greeny to it. And the other one is a mix all. Um, oh, I can't read it in German, but anyway, it's a goldy color, okay? I can't read that. Oxid, aqua, Goldie. I'm gonna mix the, both of those with a little bit of um, um, our glaze, our basic glaze. Okay. There's a globule for that. And a globule for 
I'm gonna take a couple of craft sticks. It's very gelatinous. <laughs> And I have my Van Dyke Brown Glaze standing by too if I decide I want to add some of that as well, or some more of that, I should say, okay? Ooh, that's great. That's okay. It's an experiment. Always an experiment. <laughs> that's why we do samples. Okay. All right, so back to my brush. Now, I'm going to just chip on some of this color, which is the, the Terra Brown. Okay, yeah, I want it to kind of look like um, grass cloth. Sorry, I'm, I'm in menopause and I can't think straight most of the time. So eventually I'm able to kick it out, but you know, it's difficult. It's a difficulty for me to be able to think straight. I know what I'm thinking. I just can't tell you about it very easily. And anybody out there that's my age probably is chuckling because they know this is real. Okay. I'm just going to use the other side of the chip brush for the goldiness. going to use this sparingly because it's pretty snappy. Now there's different ways you can apply it. You could just apply it with two chip brushes and just, you know, ha have that be your final application just by applying it, you know. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off like I did on the other one. I just want a little bit more of this Terra Brown. I like that one. Okay. Now, back to my rag. Crunkle up your rag like this when it's good and crunkled. Sorry, my dishwasher's running right below us here. Yes, I'm in my kitchen. It would make too much sense to be in my studio. <laughs> huh. I like it. Putting a little bit more of the Terra Brown on there, I like that one. So the thing is, when you're working on samples, you could make a whole bunch of these boards or cut them down to make smaller samples. And, you know, you just kind of keep notes on how you, you know, did each one. And then in the end, you can awe and amaze yourself by all the different results that you could create. And it is pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool what we can do with um, paint and glaze and all of the products that are out there on the market now. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to take a look at it. And I think we're going to tip it, which I'll teach you about, um, with a lighter color when we get back. Hi, okay, I'm back. So now for the tipping, I am going back to a little bit of my um, first base color, which is Sherwin-Williams um, Antique White. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of titanium white in there, just to lighten it up a little bit, right? It's kind of like a fifth color. I don't want it whitey, white, 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 I don't think, because grass cloth is natural. But I don't want it the same color as the base exactly either. So I'm gonna add a little bit of our basic glaze.
I didn't put a real lot of the glaze in there. I just wanted to um, make it just a little bit more translucent. Okay, now I'm gonna get just a cheap old um, cell sponge. You know, they are like three, four bucks. Okay, cheap old cell sponge. This is stained from other uses. It's not dirty, it's not coming off of my hand. Okay, um, make sure it's just damp. And then I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna offload it on the side, okay? Because I want it to be just kind of barely flat on there, all right? So offloading it, okay? Now I'm gonna very carefully do some tipping just where um, the texture is coming up will be tipped with this kind of like cream color and you'd be amazed what tipping does. It just makes everything kind of pop and I don't want it to pop a lot. We don't want super pop. Oops. We don't want pop like pop rocks pop. We just want to kind of exaggerate that texture, just create a little bit more interest. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more on, because I'm digging that. You see how I'm putting it on, like, like I'm holding this sponge, like literally flat. That beeping is my dishwasher. <laughs> I tried to turn it off so I could do this video, but it's yelling at me to Turn me back on. Well, look here, dishwasher. You're going to have to wait. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. So this will be option number three for my client. Um, so I'll be back in a minute when I'll have all the tape pulled and it's going to be cleaned up and I'll kind of show you the three different options. Okay. Okay, here's our little storyboard. Um, so the cabinetry that I'll be working on is um, two built-in cabinets that are now stained um, oak, okay? So that orangey oak, you know, that orangey oak. Um, so the cabinets now will be mainly tricorn black, which is this. This is a good designer black if you ever wonder, oh, which black should I use? There's so many black. Use tricorn black. It's a Sherwin Williams color and it's a designer favorite. It's just a good, good black. Not too green, not too weird, not too browny. Okay, this was the second board. Okay, I mean the first board, the first option. Just paint over my texture. And this bottom one is the one that I put the most effort into, which I think really actually looks a lot like grass cloth. And if I tip, tip it upside down, this one is just one color of glaze over the base coat. So those are the three options I'm going to give for tomorrow and um, I'll let you know what happens. <laughs>